the Reptile Barn. Today's vlog, talking about something that was requested. Um, we have a colony of dubia roaches that we use to feed Little Blue, our blue tree monitor, and Sophie, the selfin dragon. And as we get more insectivores in our collection, that will just go up, so roaches will become more and more important to us. Uh, so I want to talk about them, how we take care of them, why we do roaches, what we feed them, just everything there is to do with our roaches. And that will be today's video. I hope you enjoy it. Let me go pull them out and we will get started. This is where they live. Um, this is inside our snake room, so it's about 80 degrees in here. These are just little styrofoam pieces to keep them up off the ground so that the tub that they live in isn't directly sitting on this. This is pretty hot. There's another pretty hot one back here. Um, our snake room hovers around 80 degrees. These that sit behind it and then below it are keeping the inside of our roach tub, which I've pulled out and is right here, at about 85 to 90 degrees, depending on you know how close to the bottom and how close to the back the roaches want to be. So they have a really perfect temperature between 85 and 90 degrees. This is their tub. As you can see, it's just a Sterilite 30 gallon tub. Uh, pretty tall. We like, we like to have some height in there because um, the roaches do not fly or climb. So as long as it's tall, we can put this on the ground. Stack one of our most important ingredients in here with no fear that the roaches will escape. These are just egg cartons. You'll notice I have two different colors. I like these. They don't have any extra dyes in them. We usually only use these, but we ran out, had to use some of the blue ones with dye. I don't think it hurts the roaches, I just don't like it personally because there is some dye that turns this blue that I feel like over time would probably not be great for the roach colony. So these are preferable. You can order these in bulk. Um, any of the insect supply companies online. We like, um, oh, I'm blanking, what's the name of the place? Oh, Rainbow Mealworms. They're like one of the biggest ones out there. Awesome place for, for insects, but I've heard great things about other places too. But we get our, our stuff from Rainbow Mealworms. That's where we got our initial roach stock from. Um, and you can buy these egg flats in bulk, real cheap. Um, or if you go through a lot of eggs, you can keep some of your own. Doesn't really matter. Just you, you need to have those. I I wouldn't recommend any other harborage. That's the word that people use uh, who keep a lot of these. Is harborage. The insects need a lot of surface area to hide in. Right. So let's take a peek here. <clears throat> That's a lot of roaches. That's a lot of roaches. That's a lot of roaches. There are a lot of roaches in here, guys. Every single thing I open up, there's just dozens and dozens of them. Maybe hundreds. There's a ton of roaches in here. Um, so let's talk about this. First, look at the lid. Absolutely riddled with holes. I like a lot of ventilation in there. And I open them up every day, even if I don't need to feed them or clean them, I still open them up just to get some air exchange. I like, I like ventilation. It gets hot in there. I don't want it to get steamy or muggy. I want it to be uh, just humid enough that they will do well without being humid enough to ever mold your cardboard. I never, ever, ever want mold on the cardboard that can wreck your colony of roaches. So, why roaches? Uh, I know I'm jumping around here, I'm going out of order, but I do want to cover everything. Why dubia roaches specifically? The two healthiest insect options for most uh, insectivore reptiles are crickets and roaches, right? Um, as far as being the bulk of their diet. I know a lot of people use mealworms. I do not feel that there are very many reptiles who will be at their healthiest if the bulk of their diet is mealworms. Crickets and 
Dubia roaches are very well rounded in the different nutrients. The protein ratio with you know protein and fat and uh, how much uh, exoskeleton there is compared to how much meat there is. Just those are the two best insects in my opinion for um, our reptiles, right? Well, if you have that as your baseline, in every other way, to me, again, roaches are just superior. Um, roaches in the wild, especially these dubia roaches, Blaptica dubia, that we keep, they live in colonies, they like close proximity, they do better when there's a bunch of them in a small space, right? Crickets are the opposite. They want to spread out. When they get too close together and too jammed in, they don't survive as well, and you have a lot of dying crickets all the time. And people who keep crickets, they know you're going to lose a bunch of crickets. That's just how it is. With roaches, not so much. You'll have one, you'll have some die, of course. I mean, you have a colony of a thousand anything, you're going to have some die, but uh, much, 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 much less frequent. Most of your roaches you produce are going to be fed to your animals, as opposed to just dying and having to get cleaned out. The dubia roaches do not bite. Crickets do. The dubia roaches don't make noise. Crickets do. The dubia roaches do not fly. Crickets can. The dubia roaches are terrible climbers. Crickets are pretty good climbers. Um, the, I mean, it goes on and on. The dubia roaches don't smell bad. Crickets can smell terrible. The dubia roaches don't croak all night. The crickets are going to be loud. So, to me, as far as the keeper goes, the roaches are just superior. They are just better than crickets. Um, I don't know that they're a ton healthier, although, you know, people who are big time promoting roaches do claim that they're healthier, but I think that the crickets are very, very healthy for your reptile, but in all these kind of practical ways, roaches are just better. Also, a big one for me is, I will be feeding insects to some larger lizards. Um, when Little Blue was a baby, he was already eating 40 crickets a day. Uh, now that he's you know, three times the size he was as a baby, he still only needs to eat 10 or so roaches a day and he's good to go. So the roaches get a lot bigger and you don't have to feed as many of them to your um, reptile. Now, crickets can produce thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of babies each female, right? The roaches, it's more in the hundreds. So in sheer mass quantity of how many insects can you produce in a short amount of time, crickets are better. That's absolutely a point in favor of crickets. But to me, the overwhelming majority of factors lines up to make the, the dubia roaches just better. Also, when crickets have escaped in my house, they live for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and I'm tracking them down and following their stupid croaking and I hate them. Uh, when a roach has escaped, if one ever has, it's just died. Never see it again, never have an infestation, these are tropical roaches. We're keeping dubia roaches. These are these are a tropical species. They don't thrive in our typical house temperatures and humidity levels. Um, I'm not saying they couldn't live and, and somehow breed or something if they found a warm spot, but much less likely to persist in your house for weeks and weeks if they get out. Um, not that you ever want any insect to get out, but uh, we've been lucky so far. I don't think we've had any roaches really escaping on us, but uh, yeah. So... I just wanted to break that down real quick, why we are using roaches. Superior nutritionally to most insects, which right there, for the sake of your reptile, they're just better. Superior in keeping standpoint to crickets. Now, I want to get back to how we keep them. We just have a plastic tub here, right? Um, with holes in the top for ventilation. We keep it very warm, as you saw over there uh, where they live with the, the heat mats and everything. We do keep them up off the ground so that there's not like, you know, right there, where's my finger? Right there would get very, very hot. We don't want that. But uh, yeah, they live in cardboard and we do not stack them, you know, horizontally. We like them up and down because if they're horizontal, the poop is just gonna fall in those cups and it's gonna build up and they won't have as much space and you're also more likely to get mold. When it's up like this, the poop all falls to the bottom, right? Now, this looks like a filthy tub, right? Look at all that poop. It's disgusting. Underneath the Cheerios, all this stuff, that's poop. But we leave it in. We do not remove the poop. 
Um, why is that? Well, the baby roaches, the, the you know the newborns, they need the adults feces to eat. Uh, they not only will they not thrive if you just try and start giving them straight up insect food, some of them won't even survive. They really need that. It is dry to the touch. It is not gross like like dog poop or something. It's just a dry, crumbly discharge and it doesn't stink so I just leave it in because they need it of course I don't want to let it build up forever and ever and ever but we always leave some in even when we deep clean this thing so I have been filming a lot of material on these dubias and I'm realizing that it is going to be far too long of a video um, didn't realize I could talk for 25 minutes about roaches but I guess I can so um, Instead, I think we're going to break this up into two pieces, so we're going to sign off for now. This will be the end of the video. We will come back with a part two so that uh, everything else that we filmed that I think is good information that I actually want to uh, include in a video, we'll just have a separate video so, we'll, so we won't have you know a 25 minute long video all in one piece. Hopefully that will be okay with you guys, so it'll be a little choppy, but uh, I just wanted to explain why we're doing this in two pieces instead of just one video, um, just so that it's not quite as long. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, I'm going to quit here for now and then start up with another video in a couple days. But really, it's all filmed in one piece, if that makes any sense. And uh, hope you like it, and hope you tune in for part two next time, and until then, we are the Reptile Barn.